In this lecture, we will continue what we were doing. Uh, we were discussing a fundamental types and we discussed the uh, Boolean type bool, which can only contain true or false or one and zero behind the scene as an integer. We also discussed the enumeration type as enum and they were essentially integer constants uh, with names uh, and behind the scene they were essentially integer constants. Uh, one more thing which needed to discuss is that you cannot change the value of a constant because, well, there's a constant. I mean, let's uh, try uh, writing a code here um let me expand this window i am going to write uh, include io stream the basic i mean the first thing you need to do is always write the basic structure or the basic outline of the program and then write the code integer void and we get uh, return zero so whatever the code is here we're going to write over here i'm going to define a constant constant integer a equals to 10 and then I'm going to print it out and I'm going to say some string that uh, the value of a is and then I'm going to write a and uh, new line and let's see what I get over here so if I just go to uh, execute and I did not save it so I think it's going to prompt me okay so the last name is 15 15 or 14 okay e 16 okay so the output is the value of a is 10 so I mean that's a constant okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to update the value if I write this as now a equals to 20 uh, it is not possible to update the value of a constant see what we get over here if I execute this thing and I click compile and run it's going to display an error and to see that error I'm going to view and floating report window so here's the report window and it says that assignment of read only variable a read only means you can only read it you cannot change it how can you assign a new value to it so it's not uh, possible because you have declared a constant and that constant uh, a uh, integer object will remain as it is throughout the scope of the program uh, another thing is that you cannot have um, let's open the file a uh, file the last file we did was i think 14 so let's open that these are two very no not 14 I think it was 13 uh, let's try that okay so here in uh, let me close this thing okay so important thing is that you cannot use the same names in the same scope I think I discussed that uh, because these are essentially name of a constant I mean you should not overuse them uh, reason is because uh, well you have to keep in mind that what names you have used uh, in the program and if they are um, I mean they should not be overused because each enumerator in an enumerator list uh, defines a new identifier so I mean essentially it's a uh, here it's DC stands for 10 and if you just try doing that again uh, let me go over here then you cannot use this thing here uh, DC with, uh, again because it has already been defined with a constant value of 10 so you should not use I mean you use ju judiciously I mean where, where, where you really have to uh, but it should not be overused then because then you have to keep in mind or then you have to keep track that what names have other variables uh, used as constants are used and you cannot reuse those names in the same uh, scope so now coming to uh, let's make a new file uh, the next topic was after boolean enumeration we have a uh, corrector type so corrector so let's see what correctors are um, corrector type is an integral type um, whose variables represents like characters like a or uh, number or digit 8 or something like that collector literals they are uh, enclosed or delimited by an apostrophe a single quote and like all integral type values character values uh, are stored behind the scene as integers essentially everything in a computer is a number whether it's a decimal number or fractional number everything even if you are seeing this mouse over here this mouse cursor this thing is actually an object with a context uh, context uh, contextual behavior but behind the scene everything about this mouse is a number including his actions including how it looks like uh, everything uh, even each pixel on the screen is actually a number and that number represents the color in which it is being displayed at and depending on what those numbers are sent to they, they might be sent to the speaker they might be sent to the monitor uh, depending on what those numbers are sent to they are 
um, interpreted in a different way. So the mouse cursor, they looks like a mouse cursor, but if you send these numbers to a speaker, it might sound, it might, you might hear a sound or something like that, depending on if you play it at the correct sampling rate or the playback rate. Okay, so coming back to character variables, and uh, I think we have to we have uh, uh, we have discussed character types before I'm uh, going to discuss that in a moment because I want to uh, demonstrate what those characters actually mean for the computer because they are essentially integers so the first thing include IO stream uh, and uh, using namespace standard and integer main uh, void and uh, then I write return zero then I'm going to declare a character type variable over here. So the first character is uh, character C. I mean character type variable and the name of that variable or name of the object, object is uh, C and it's going to store A. Make sure you uh, assign a character uh, enclosed or delimited by the single quotes or apostrophe. Okay, so C out. I'm going to print, well, uh, C is or c equals to i mean you can just put any any string over here and the value of c would be printed by in here and um that's it then i'm going to print uh, c out and i'm going to write c is stored or c is stored uh if i want the value of c not the c c is just a symbol representing some uh character value of c is stored as i mean what the value of c is that is a so i'm going to write as a new function watch out what i'm watch out what i'm doing integer c let's see what it looks like uh, nl and uh, let's see how it runs Okay, project and execute, sorry, compile and run. I would not save it. What was the last name? 16. So I'm going to remain name it as e17.cpp and see what we get over here. So, C equals to A. I mean, the A character is stored in a character type variable which is represented by C. The name of that memory location is essentially C. And we have stored A over there, but the value of C, which is A, is stored as 65. What we mean that, that there is a space in a memory and it is occupying one or two bytes. And we have stored a character which we represented as A, but for computer, everything is a number. Therefore, instead of A, it is now actually it has actually stored a number 65 now where did this number 65 come from it is actually an ascii code and if i go to the website if you go to the website ascii table that's a s c i i uh, t a uh, b l e dot com so what you get is the convert the table ascii table and its description it stands for american standard code for information interchange uh, computers can only understand numbers so an ascii code is the a numerical representation of a character such as a or ampersand or an action of some sort and maybe some escape sequence or some control key and something like that ascii was developed a really long time ago and now and now the non-printing characters are really used let me zoom in for because if you can read it okay so zoom in a little bit more so now you can read it. you can go to the website and read it for you yourself okay uh, blue is the ASCII character table and this includes description of the first 32 non-printing characters. You cannot actually see them, but they are used. They are designed to be used with teletypes, I mean really old legacy computers. Um, and if someone says that they want some document in ASCII format, they mean that in plain text with no formatting such as tab, bold, underscoring or some color. Uh, the raw format that any computer can understand. This is usually so they can easily import the file into their own application without issues. And Notepad, uh, the Windows app, uh, creates ASCII desk or in MS Word you can save a file as text only not in doc or docx format but with txt format it will not it will then remove all the um formatting so i mean if you uh, i mean even these files uh here i mean these cpp files they are essentially text files uh, so I mean they have an extension of CPP but you can actually ink, uh, in, uh, open these files with a notepad or any text editor okay so coming to here if you see that uh, there is a decimal because ev everything in the computer is a number and computers are usually represented in a com numbers are usually represented in the computer in a form of binary numbers but binary numbers they have like the stream of ones and zeros they are la rather 
rather large and unwieldy numbers so instead of using binary numbers we represent those binary numbers as hexadecimal numbers because uh, each hexadecimal number it goes from 0 to f 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 a b c d e f uh, each hexadecimal number can actually represent four bits of binary so in some other class we might be discussing the binary to hexadecimal and maybe to decimal con conversion uh, let's see where's a um, if you go here these are essentially escape characters null character very important um, and then we have used this uh, I think backspace and the vertical tab I think it's an escape character and this thing is new page that's backslash n this thing is carriage return backslash r uh, i think windows actually uses both it uses uh carriage return as well as backslash n for a new line uh, some other operating system maybe linux or mac os they probably use one of these two things i mean they might use backslash n they might use backslash r uh, but the now the most often used uh, character non-printing character is actually backslash n uh, in pretty much all the operating systems so let's see where is our character a this is space bar i mean if you press the space bar this character even if it's not printed but if it inserts in a space that is stored as 20 in hex or 32 in decimal so these are the mathematical kind of operator these are numbers and numbers I mean 9 as a character is actually stored as 57 in the computer as a character not as a number okay so if you go to a a is if you can I actually it's an image a is uh, let me zoom in really large so where is a over here a is 65 and that's what we got over there b is 66 c is 67 d is 68 e is 69 f is 70 g is 71 and uh, if you go to small letters the small a since it is actually case sensitive a is small a is 97 so that means that if you add 32 if you add 65 if you add 32 to 65 you get 97 and if you add 32 to 66 you get 98 that means that if you add 32 to the ascii code of any large of any capital character you will get the small letter so coming back to what we actually saw over there in the code uh, let me get the window okay so what we did is value of c is stored as we have used something known as a type cast operator I mean C is actually a character but we are saying that hey what's if I convert this thing into an integer what we get behind the scene it's an integer so it's a type cast operator and it is used here to um, reveal the corresponding integral value so that means that uh, character values are used for uh, well input and output they appear in their character form instead of their integral form the so character a is printed a letter a not as integer 65 which is this integ integral representation so let's try different um, different uh, examples so let's say if I have another character character um, let's call this c2 just a name c2 equals to t I have to enclose the character in uh, as a character in a single uh, quotes so I write C out uh, value I mean I'm going to write uh, C2 equals to give some space over here and I write C2 then I write the if I write uh, and integer c i mean this is a string really i mean it's not doing anything over here um then if i write without the double course then it's a type cost operator and i'm going to write i think it should have written c2 over here c2 integer c2 then see what we get over here and l and uh, go to project execute not project and uh, compile it one okay I think T A N D I think what is that oh sorry and zero C T and I should place a space over here so this much more readable okay C equals to A that's okay and value of C is stored at 65 and uh, C2 equals to T 
T. C2 has the value. C2 is essentially a symbol which represents a memory location which contains T, which is actually 116. So let me repeat that. C2 is the name of a memory location in somewhere in the memory and it contains a letter T for us if you represent that thing as a character but if you s actually it is stored as 116 in binary format the so 116 is a decimal number let's see 116 is uh, coming to 116 116 and here it is a small t right over here 116 is a small t that's a decimal number okay so one or two more examples and then um let's try another thing let's say declare another variable c3 equals to um backslash n or maybe t anything really so uh it's what it is it's a back it's a tab character i think it's a space eight is space bars uh, if you just put it so it moves the cursor uh i think eight is spaces let's see how how many spaces and i route and i write c out equals to an output operator and i write c3 equals to or minus equals to c3 with value and uh, and integer c3 just a string just write over here the function is not executing over here um it's just a string and that's it the function is executing over here because we have written it without the double quotes i mean here it's a string literally you can just write any correct you can just write your name over here it doesn't make any difference so just write and l and let's see what we get over here let's try another one c equals to let's declare another variable c um four equals to, i can i could actually use the character c here and i can just overwrite the values and i can just write c c c everywhere um just to differentiate really uh nothing that is special you can use the same variable name to assign it a new value and use that variable i mean right now i'm i'm actually making one two three four uh you memory spaces and you just want to demonstrate i can use the very same memory space because i've used it over there so i can just uh, reuse that uh memory space to assign it a new value and uh, see the result i mean uh, if there is no further use of the uh these variable so i can just reuse it and overwrite the value i could just written uh do not need to declare it i can just write uh c equals to um c equals to some character let's pick uh, um sorry there is a single code okay some uh, let me be an exclamation mark and i i mean if you want to read i mean this thing is going to override this value here so if you want to do that i mean you can just do it no problem uh because we want to reuse the old mem or as old memory space already being it's not being used again uh all over the program so you can reuse it to demonstrate a new thing so i'm going to write c out and I'm going to display the message that uh sorry uh c equals to and we're going to write c i mean the value of c would be printed over here i mean here i mean you can just write anything over here it's just a string literal and i'm going to write um and integer c equals to and the function integer c i'm going to write and l let's see what we get uh, i hope there is there are no errors okay a is i think this we have discussed these lines and t is 6116 now c what we, backslash t c okay I, it's hard to actually count how many spaces are there i think there might be eight one two three four five six seven eight and this is space bar belongs to uh here okay three and backslash t is nine so let's see the nine and 33 where are nine and 33 uh nine where is nine okay nine is decimal here we have horizontal tab backslash t and the other one was 33 so let's see where 33 is it's 31 i think it's over here 33 is the exclamation mark so i mean if even if you have a stored exclamation mark internally the computer is treating it as number 33 if you print it as an integer you will get integer 33 if you print it as character you will be seeing this behind the scene everything in a computer is a number 
one last thing about these characters that since they are stored as numbers you can change their case if you know that that's the letter a and then ascii code of 65 that means if i'm saving a character variable which contains a internally that's actually an integer 65 and uh, well if i just add plus one to a i will get 66 so let's see what we get over here and we can we can also use this uh, technique just by adding some numbers and we can convert the large letters to um, uh, from the capital letters we can convert them to small letters because we can see that there's a difference of i think 65 and 97 it contains a difference of 32 so if i add 65 or uh, a plus 32 i should get this thing i mean i need to demonstrate that so going back to our code and uh, i think let's uh, comment this thing so that uh, a compiler doesn't read it and i'm going to make a i mean i just don't want to delete this thing because i mean compiler is not going to read it anyway so let's go to let's declare a new variable let's call it character uh, c I mean this thing has now been commented so I mean it doesn't simply exist for the compiler so I'm going to make a new character character C equals to A and I'm going to print that um, C out equals to sorry output operator C out um, and that's C and and L and see what we get over here It says a over here which we expect it to be now what we do is that we have uh, c equals to c plus one that means internally a is actually uh, 65 so 60 internally 65 now 66 so what we did over here we have added 65 plus one the whole value of this expression would be 66 and now it is assigned to uh, or this variable c has now been updated internally as 66 but it's still the type of this uh, variable is a corrector so i'm expecting it that c out would now output um, b let's see what we get here we have I mean like a I mean the first it was a and we added one now we got B and let's say if I have uh, C equals to C plus 32 because the value of C I mean I I mean uh, I can just uh, print another thing that uh, integer C is and integer c sorry and then we get another endl and let me comment this line for a moment and see what we get over here uh, f11 F11 is a shortcut for, for dev C++ compiler run. Okay, so A was uh, 65 and we added 1 to it. So this expression was integer and was assigned to character. So, well, now the type of this whole expression would be, I mean, it was, um, before evaluation, it was actually an integer expression. But since we have assigned it to a character, it takes a role of a character. Um, it is now stored, the value of C is now stored as 66. So what we do here, here is that we update the value of C with 32. So the value of C, C out, and I can just say uh, value of C is, and I just uh, demonstrate C, I mean print C over here, and I can write and uh, in integer form, I can just write anything over here. Integer C is integer C. And let's see what we get over here.
there we have I mean a B it was 66 and uh, C was actually the name of the variable uh, do not confuse it with these letters I mean it contains a value uh, it contained the value 66 initially then we add it uh, over here then we added 32 and then the value is now 98 and 98 corresponds to the ASCII code B uh, that means that um, I mean let's see if we have uh, the website yes we do have it still open So 98 is small b so even if you have let's say we have let's take a letter g 103 so what we can do is let's try 103 where can we get 103 uh, it was letter g right so we can just update the value of c c equals to g and uh, let's print that I mean c out c and and L so we should be getting like G over here so let's see what we get and we got a small G over here uh, it's can it's zoomable probably not or well I mean we do get we are getting a small G I'm not so sure whether you can read it uh, but it's here okay so what I can I can do is I want to make this a small letter a capital letter and we know that there's a difference between a small letters and capital letters is 32 uh, and this, that means that a the capital letters have a lower ASCII code and the small letters have a larger ASCII code I mean just the way it was designed to be nothing really specific but we do know that there's a difference of 32 between the ASCII code or the numeric value which is stored and we are displaying that numeric value as a corrector because this compiler and the computer knows that if I am sending 65 as a corrector uh, that number it would display capital A similarly if I am um, if I am uh, sending like a uh, letter G was internally stored as where is that it was stored as internally 103 so if I'm sending 103 as a number but I want it to be displayed as a character uh, because this type set it to be a character the compiler will uh, or the program will uh, s display it as G so we know that if we want to convert the small G to capital G I need to subtract 103 minus 71 I need to subtract 32 from this number so what I'm going to do is I do know that this character this letter G I mean is internally stored as uh, a number so I can just say C minus 32 so that means that C out C is now updated and uh, this C out will display capital G let's see what we get here we have it this is I mean I will explain the above four lines but here it says uh, small g and we subtracted 32 from there so it's not capital G uh, even though there are uh, standard functions built in in the C++ standard template library which we will be using quite extensively but we can make our own uh, subroutines or functions which can take a text from the user and it can see whether the text has a small letters or capital letters and depending on what the user wants to do we can convert the small letters to capital letters by subtracting 32 from their ASCII codes uh, or we can convert the capital letters to small letters uh, by adding 32 to the uh, ASCII code so I mean I could just make a loop uh, which just repeats this again and again but since we haven't done the uh, loop topic yet uh, I mean if you want to do it again and again I can just start with A and print all the ASCII letters and uh, capital and then start with uh, 32 adding the original value and then print all these small letters it's actually doable uh, but right now we just uh, leave with that uh, one more thing I need to the last thing is this what if I did this expression C minus 32 here I can do that I mean let's see what we get over here C minus 32 so I'm going to comment that this thing is not going to run because I've commented that I want to do this thing over here C minus 32 so what we can what we will get over here so let's execute this thing compile and run Oh, it's now this letter G is sorry. This letter G is uh, 
displayed over here then we subtracted 32 here I mean I'm not running this line because I've commented that that means that whenever the commented lines are encountered the compiler just ignores them and now we are seeing 71 whereas in the previous case we were actually seeing uh, the letter capital G but now we are getting 71 so what is really going on so actually what happened is since here we were subtracting 32 this whole expression was an integer but this type C the type of C that is a character so that means what the integer value would be saved as character it will automatically be displayed as a character but here this expression is an integer so I want if I want to convert this expression into integer what I can do is I can typeset into integer sorry where is that I can typeset into uh, sorry uh, sorry sorry not uh, I, if this thing is an integer I can typeset this expression which is an integer into a character so let's see whether this thing works and there we have it so this thing I mean this expression has now been converted into a character and uh, the value is 71 but we s are saying to the computer this 71 has to be displayed as a character so the computer looks up the ASCII table and it passes the I mean uh, it passes to the you know window whatever handles the graphical display and say that look we need to display 71 at this position the graphical display would draw these pixels but behind these pixels which we are saying the letter G is actually the number 71 and actually that's uh, 71 is actually stored in the binary format um, in the memory but since we are accustomed to seeing the decimal format because we have 10 fingers so decimal format is the most natural thing for humans so um, that means that the computer will actually display the numbers as decimal by default uh, but internally the computer is saving those numbers in binary format uh, we are going to discuss the binary and hexadecimal um, in a few moments or maybe in the next lecture and now we leave these characters uh, the type character with that in the end just to summarize what we did in this lecture we saw the constant keyword and we saw that we cannot change the value of the constant and then we uh, saw that uh, you can how to declare the characters and then we saw that um, the characters are internally stored as integers and if you want to uh, manipulate them you can add numbers to those characters and then they will uh, display some new characters uh, depending on what the ASCII code is so that means that character is internally stored as an integer you want to store some character you have to declare the character as character A equals to um, enclose in a single course and some character uh, you can also assign them as integer values and they will be stored there and if you display those integer values as character you will see a character if you uh, display those integer values as integers as we did uh, just uh, a few minutes ago uh, then they will be displayed as numbers so um, and then we also saw that uh, what ASCII codes are and how they work uh, we saw the decimal values of ASCII code in the next lecture we will be seeing that uh, how number systems actually work internally in the computer system and what those ASCII codes actually mean in binary and hexadecimal format and we also saw finally we also saw that how we can convert the small characters to capital characters or capital characters uh, to small characters knowing that there is a difference of 32 between large and small ASCII code or large and small or capital letters ASCII codes. So see you in next lecture and we will see the number system and we will study the binary number system and we will see the conversion of binary to decimal and decimal to binary number system.